1957 and Session 8 of Civil Law Act 1956. So the first part will uh, focus on dependency claim. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, the, the provision, I mean, the, the focus is on Section 7, the provision from Section 7. And later, we are going to continue with Session 8 and it talk about estate claim. So for Section 7, basically, uh, it will be covering general damages, which is bereavement. And then uh, we are going to move to a loss of financial support. And then uh, special damages as well, which um, which has under it funeral as well as cost incurred to replace the services rendered. So it's a long phrases. So that's why we put acronym there, C I T R S R. But you, I mean, you don't have to use acronym. Okay, if you think um, it's hard to it's hard to memorize, you don't have to memorize. But it's just a matter of making it a short, a bit short word rather than uh, putting in the full the full phrases. Okay, let's. Let's move to the first one, dependency claim. So basically, when you talk about dependency claim, um, even the word gives you some hints. Okay, Dependen dependency, uh, the, the root word would be depend, okay? De from the word depend, and then we have the word dependent. Okay, and then here, dependency claim. Dependent refers to uh, people, okay? Dependency is um, is, a, is a noun, I think, okay? A noun. So depend is the uh, the verb. So section seven. So basically, the the G is okay, the essence of section seven. It talk about compensation, monetary compensation, damages uh, to be given to whom, awarded to whom, awarded to family of a person for loss occasion by his death. Meaning, if the victim, if the plaintiff uh, died in the incident, in the accident, okay. So uh, who can make the claim? Who is entitled to uh, be awarded with the claim, with the compensation? The family. Okay, we want to know who actually will be considered as a family, okay, legally speaking. So, and then um, uh, basically the, the whole aim, the objective of this um, uh, section 7 is to provide dependents, okay, a prudent sum, reasonable sum, certain sum to supply them with their financial support that would have been provided for them if the disease had not been killed. I mean, if the disease is alive, then this is the support that the disease has uh, has been had 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 give okay, had been uh, given when um, he or she was alive. So this is the basis of uh, the provision, and this is the summary. We are going to have a look at the full provision after this. Okay, the real uh, the real words of the section, but this is a summary so that you know. Oh, such a seven is about what? Okay, seven one is about what? Seven two is about what? Okay, seven eleven seven five. If you read through, okay, after this we are going to have a look. Section 7 is a very lengthy, a long provision um, similar to Section 28A okay, that we discussed under personal injury. So Section 7, it has from Subsection 1 until Subsection 11. So 7, 1, 7, 2 and under uh, some of the section, it has clauses. Okay? So it's quite lengthy. I mean, it's very detailed. It discusses almost everything. So for Section 7, Subsection 1, basically, um, uh, it just make it clear, okay, defendant will be liable, okay, as would have been if the death had not Ensued, meaning that here this is the liability. Okay, if uh, if, uh, if the the defendant, I mean, if the victim or if the plaintiff uh, does not die, okay, but then the, uh, the 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 accident is fatal anyway. Okay, it caused death. And section seven two, it talk about who are the family. I mean, who can claim? Who who is who are who are entitled to claim? Okay, under uh, section seven. So it will um uh embrace or cover okay it consists of wife husband parents child but it doesn't include siblings okay so there is a limit there is limitation here uh sibling here that one is under old provision okay uh, for section seven here actually we have new provision the new amendment okay i put it in the slide towards the end of the slides okay you can see the um, the amendment the changes that the uh, the draft or the legislator have made to the law okay, to reflect the current uh, necessity, okay, current situation. And now the new, after the amendment, we have the new provision, okay, we, meaning that here the claim also will include any person with disabilities under care. Mean that here there's no need to prove, um, I mean, sibling or non-sibling. So any, anyone, okay, any person, it's very broad here. Okay, but then provided with disability, disabilities, okay, disabled lah, disabled person. And then section 7, section 11, it give the meaning, okay, the definition, interpretation of the word child, parent. And then uh, section 7, section 5, it provide for limitation period, which is only three years. Okay, normally in civil cases, we have longer limitation period. But for this, 
fatal accident so mean that here the the families has to act quickly okay? cannot really sit um, or cannot really wait okay have to bring the action if they really wanted to claim or uh, dependency claim okay so what are the damages which are recoverable other uh, for dependency claim so basically it covers three okay three things here general damages but of course it's not general damages similar to um, personal injury okay here for dependency claim general damages here refers to bereavement okay, which is provided under section 7 subsection 3a and 3b and then um, another dependency claim is loss of financial support and the third one is special damages which actually refers to funeral as well as CITRSR. okay we haven't gone to the Okay, we want to go to uh, the full provision first okay, before we go to this slide. We go to section, uh, I mean, Civil Law Act. Okay, here. Yeah. Uh, part 3 okay, of Civil Law, Civil Law Act, CLA. Uh, so, it is meant to cover the situation of fatal accidents okay, and survival of causes of action. Uh, survival of causes of action under section 8. And then 7 1 here, we talk about, um, I mean, this is the provision of law. Okay, the law provides, okay. Uh, all the claim here as if the death had not um, occurred, okay, had not ensued. So this is the claim, but the death is there. So we allow the claim, basically, the, the, the law allows the claim. And then section two, it talk about a wife, husband, parent, child, and also person with disabilities. So here, no need to prove family connection, so long it is under the care of the deceased okay, when, he, uh, when he was alive. And then we want to go to section five, about limitation just now. Limitation period here, okay. Not more than one action shall be brought for and in respect of the same subject matter of complaint. So only can bring one one action, put in all the claims. Okay, cannot bring action uh, and and later another action cannot. And every such action shall be brought within three years. Okay, after the death from the date of the death of the deceased, then um has to file the claim. And section eleven here, okay, the interpretation shall include son, daughter, okay, it include as well grandson, okay, cucu lah, a grandson, granddaughter, even stepson and stepdaughter, okay, mean that here, non, uh, I mean not necessarily biological lah, and then actually it covers as well, okay, if you go to proviso here, it covers illegitimate and it covers adopted, provided uh, registered lah, adoption has to be uh, done according to the law. It okay, must be proper, properly registered. So parent includes father, mother, grandfather and grandmother. Pension includes written, uh, this is the definition of uh, pension, okay? Written of contribution and any payment. Okay, we were discussing 7.3 just now. 7.3, yeah, loss of earning. Okay, we go to slides first. General damages. Right, so general damages under section 7 or under fatal, accident or other death okay uh, of course the the claims uh, are different okay uh, we, i mean if you if we were to compare with personal injury general damages that one refers to pain and suffering so here death can no no longer i mean how to prove pain and suffering i mean disease already okay? that died already so general, general damages under uh, dependency claim it refers to bereavement so bereavement in bahasa melayu okay uh, we call it uh, berkabung i mean state of sorrow that's the definition state of sorrow okay, you are so i mean grievous okay, grief or very sad uh, over the death or departure of a loved one and we have section 3a and 3b actually this is the amendment before the amendment okay, the, this is lump sum okay meaning it's a fixed amount you don't have to prove it general remember general i mean there's no proper calculation there's no specific methods to calculate so previously before amendment it was ten thousand only okay but now uh, to reflect the 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 value of money okay, current situation so ten thousand is very small very little amount so now it has been amended so now um the, the amount for bereavement is thirty thousand cannot discount cannot reduce okay this is the fixed amount okay the moment there's any any death okay and there is any dependent okay to claim for bereavement yes okay the amount that the court will allow will be 30,000 lump sum for whom okay for um I delete gamma need to take to allow Irshad hmm. 
Okay here just now. Okay, so who can, who who are entitled for uh, bereavement here? I mean, they who actually suffered um, uh, the loss, okay, the state of sorrow. Okay here. So basically, it is allowed for spouse of the deceased, meaning here husband and wife, vice versa. What if the deceased doesn't have any spouse? So cannot claim huh, for bereavement. I mean, no dependent to claim okay, for the death. And then also child of the deceased. Okay, meaning that here, if deceased has child, also can claim. And also parent parent of the deceased. Okay, let's say the deceased is unmarried, then a parent can claim. Okay, so bereavement is quite straightforward. Basically, I mean, this, uh, because the, the, the sum allowed is lump sum. No need to prove whatsoever. Just prove that uh, there is a death and then this is the dependence for the deceased. So just claim the fixed amount. But for uh, another category of claim is loss of earning. Okay, remember, you don't be confused with L-O-F-E because uh, how, 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 I mean, the, 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 the word doesn't uh, fit into the context of the death. Okay, there's no future earning, no future in fact. I mean, no more earnings. So how, how do you, we cannot use the term future earnings. So the term used is loss of financial support. Okay, the, the amount is actually to support the, the, the dependent, okay, those who are still living and which was actually uh, supported financially by the disease. It is provided under section 7, section 3, 4, okay, clause 4. Even though the name is, is uh, different, okay, uh, we call it loss of earning, L-O-E, okay. Uh, but calculation is the same. I mean, uh, there must be multiplication and multiplier. Meaning that here, you have to prove uh, by way of calculation. You need to calculate. It's not lump sum, like bereavement, okay. There must be calculation. And then, um, we are going to refer to section 7 again. Meaning that here, in order to make the calculation, do we cross refer to section 28A? No, we don't, okay. We just use section... 7. 28A is meant for personal injury. Okay, the victim is still alive. Okay, the plaintiff is still alive. But section 7 here, the plaintiff is the deceased. So we are going to use section 7, 3, 4. I mean, maybe uh, you keep on log out, log in, kan? Okay, Munira, join us. Alright, so... Let's have a look at section 7.3 because uh, okay, this is the calculation, multiplication, multiplier and it is provided under section 7.3 lah. Okay, 7.3, 4D. Alright, we call it LOFS, loss of financial support. We go to at section 7.3, 7.3. Okay, here, 3, okay, 3 and then D. Yeah. You can have a look. It is a, it is a long provision actually. Okay, here you can read here from here, and you have the proviso. You have clause one and a. Okay, seven three one a. It's a long. I mean, it's a long uh, section. Okay, B, you have B, you have C, you have D, okay, and you also need to read 2 and 3 later and 4 as well. All under section 7, 3. Ah, this is the calculation, okay, 4A, all right. You can see 60 years and then minus blah, blah, blah. You read here and this is the summary, okay, this is the summary, how to calculate basically. So how do we calculate for a loss of financial support? So we still uh, we are still using the concept of multiplication uh, times by multiplier. But how to know the multiplier? So multiplier, okay, uh, plaintiff must be, I mean, um, if the age is 31 to 59, so multiplier will be 60 okay, minus age at the time of the death. Okay, as compared to personal injury under section 28A, uh, 60 mi minus um, Age at the time of accident, kan? not at the time of the death, okay, when the death occurred. And still, um, I mean, divided by two, more or less similar actually, okay, except for the date, I mean, the age, the age, okay, which age we are referring to. Okay, and as usual, we also have problem here, okay, the other problem, uh, I mean, um, there is some, there are some problems, uh, okay, the other problem with multiplier in calculating uh, LOFS is that, Courts tend to take into account the vicissitudes of life, okay, and the court, uh, most of the court, they have the tendency to cut it down. I mean, um, for example, you calculate and then you have uh, this amount, I mean, this um, 
this figure for the multiplier, still the court take it down, reduce it further. Okay, because why the court said, well, actually, um, the I mean, the this is died already, isn't it? So we want to, I mean, so many uncertainties in life. So the court has the tendency to uh, discretion to cut it down further based on expected working life of the deceased and then period of support, the dependence of the court. I mean that here, uh, how, do, how, how, how you can convince the court that yes, the deceased will provide you uh, the financial support up to, up to his, um, I mean, uh, up to 60 years old because calculation is up to 60, kan? Okay, 60 minus um, uh, the death, age of the death. So how can you convince the court um, that actually this is will give you money every month until 60 years old. So that's why the court has tendency to cut it down further. And marriage of the child or remarriage of the spouse because once the child get married, of course the support or the, the money given to the parent uh, will be lower usually or maybe no more money after the child has um, uh, their own family. Can. So this is all the factors in which the court has the tendency, okay, the discretion to use the discretion to taxing down, we call it tax down, okay, or maybe cut it down, okay, the multiplier. We haven't come to the case yet today. Okay, so this is the case uh, in which, okay, in the case of Chan Chin Ming, okay, uh, this case reflects this slide okay, here. I mean, like, this is the problem. The court, uh, the court actually has the uh, discretion to tax it down further. This is what happened, okay, and um, it was done by Supreme Court. Supreme Court, Supreme Court reduced the multiplier. It was, uh, I mean, the case was reported in 1994, okay? But actually, uh, remember, Supreme Court is the highest court, kind of level of court. And, um, I mean, if the court is at the same level, I mean, they are, I mean, the decision is not binding to each other. But it binds the lower court, okay? It binds Court of Appeal, it binds High Court. But other Supreme Court, they have different way, different approach, okay, of, um, I mean, uh, defining or ascertaining multiplier. Okay, if we were to compare with Ibrahim Ismail, I mean that here 10 years after, okay, but decision by Court of Appeal, also very, uh, I mean the, the superior court here, but slightly lower compared to Supreme Court. Okay, we go to Chan Chin Ming first, okay, uh, the case by Supreme Court here, what happened in Chan Chin Ming? Okay, uh, when the accident happened, okay, the deceased was 25 years old. And then a defendant appeals against the decision. Okay, mean that here, um, the uh, one of the grounds of appeal is that loss of financial support seven hundred fifty. That's the decision by the lower court. Uh, should be reduced to half. Okay, because why? Um, the appellant said, well, the this is actually the mother spent only half. Uh, for he, for herself. Okay, the mother is the dependent. Why the other half of seven fifty here was used for the siblings, whereas in the previous law, his siblings are not considered as dependent. Even now, these old siblings are not dependent, provide it, uh, but accept that if the siblings are, are disabled, then can claim. So, uh, even now, this okay, current law, siblings are not considered as dependent. What more if the disease has so many siblings, can? All right. Um, so, it's, I mean, you will make the the um, the, the amount, okay, the damages will be very high. Like, that's why it's not, I mean, uh, siblings are not considered. It doesn't fall under categories of um, um, dependence. Keep on losing weight. Okay, and then um, another uh, issue. Okay, I mean uh, uh, when the when it when appeal. Okay, this is the issues to be considered by the court. So whether a parent's claim okay, should follow the statutory multiplier, whether the court has the right to tax it down. Okay, whether it is a fixed uh, fixed uh, figures. Okay, fixed number of multiplier, or can the court actually uh, reduce it further? And this is majority decision. It's not unanimous. I mean, here we have minority, we have majority. So the court agreed to reduce the sum because only half can use by the mother, and then um, half is used by the uh, by the siblings. So the court reduced the sum to three seven five. I think that one is all uh, acceptable. But the court even reduced the multiplier up to seven only. Okay, actually, it was uh, more than seven. Okay, uh, at the lower court. So the court further cut it down, reduce the multiplier. But there's also dissenting, dissenting judgment. I mean, there is some of the judges, judges are not um, agreeable. So we have majority and dissenting judgment. Uh, because in dissenting judgment, uh, one of the judge, okay, the, the judges here, so Edgar, Edgar, okay, Joseph, Supreme Court judge, 
uh, he said, the court has no discretion okay, to reduce multiplier, the number of the years. Okay? I mean, it has to be fixed. Okay? You, you calculate and you have that number, then it has to be fixed. Or maybe it is uh, or, uh, already decided by the, by the statute. So no way to reduce the uh, multiplier. So, um, I mean, the problem remains until the year 2004, in which Court of Appeal actually revisit the issue. Okay, the, uh, the Court of Appeal judges, they try to have a look, review the decision. And uh, one of the judges here is uh, the, the former CJ, okay, Chief Justice, Gopal Sri Ram, very famous. He, uh, so he argues that judges are not allowed to tamper with statute. I mean, if the statute says it's 16, then it is 16. If statute says it's 10, then it's 10. Okay, you don't have the discretion to tax it down further. Multiplier has been fixed. So now, the question that we have to think now, okay? So we have the uh, sup uh, Supreme Court decision 1994 in which the court used discretion to cut it, cut it down. But in the year 2004, Court of Appeals said, uh, no, he cannot simply, uh, I mean, I mean, reduce the multiplier. So, what's the what's the attitude of the court now? Okay, or at present, currently, okay, what is the position of the courts? Can the courts actually um, give priority to court of appeal decision rather than supreme court's decision? Okay. So we have another uh, later case lah. Okay, two o seven. Mari mutu anak lelaki balapan and Abdullah Ismail. So in this case, um, the court said, well, there are now two decisions okay, uh, by, uh, by the Superior Court, first by Court of Appeal and then by Supreme Court. So which one to follow? Okay, uh, in the case of Mar Mari Mutu, the court said, yeah, well, we have to make a choice. We want to follow which one? Okay, because different approach okay, in uh, towards multiplier here, which one to follow? And the court said, generally, okay, the court must dutifully okay, uh, the obligation is there, okay, obliged to observe the repeated reminders of the federal court, okay, without showing any disrespect for the court of appeal. In that here, um, this is the doctrine of binding precedent. In that here, if um, the uh, decision by federal court or supreme court, so it binds all, okay, it binds all the courts, okay, that's what we mean by doctrine of binding precedent, okay. And then, so, <laughs> So uh, that's a reading class lah. Okay, here, all right. In order to know how actually the court resolved the, uh, the issue or the problem here, we have, uh, I mean, this is the recommended reading lah for you to, for you to, to know, okay. All right, um, you, uh, this is your reading class. Uh, the articles is available uh, on Lexus and Access Online lah, basically. I hope you all have, have access to this online database uh, uh, of campus. So we have the, the article um, uh, entitled Civil Claims Involving Motor Vehicle Accident okay, whether Court of Appeal, uh, the Apex Court. I mean that here, uh, whether we should follow the decision by Court of Appeal. Is it considered as Apex Court? And then we also have another article, uh, 208, just not 209, okay? Tio Chutong and, no, this is the case, okay? Tio Chutong and, and, and Ananda Kiru, Kiru Izan PSR. And, Elias Ananda Krishnan. So if you read these two, um, I mean one one case law and another uh, one is article, you actually will be able to uh, to answer. Okay, this is it's like an answer. I don't give you the specific uh, answer kan, for this. This is just for you to think. So if you read these two things here, okay. Uh, you will have the, the answer to that, okay? Meaning that here now, we are given uh, two approaches by two different courts, two level of courts, so which one to follow, okay? Uh, depending on the situation, now you have to read, okay? Later. Okay, now uh, we, we are done with the first two claims under uh, dependency claim, okay? We, 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 deal, we deal with general, which is actually on bereavement, and then we uh, discuss about financial support just now, basically the the claim, I mean, the way to calculate is multiplicate times by multiplier. But there's problem with the multiplier because of the two approaches by the court. Okay, now we go to special damages. So again, uh, uh, special damages, if we were to compare with Section 28A or personal injury, is different. Okay, for special damages for death, okay, of course, it refers to specific claim. Okay, what is specific for death cases or fatal accident cases? Actually, special damages here, it refers to funeral expenses. Okay, whenever there's any death, so there must be funeral. 
So, funeral expenses, it is um, uh, provided in section 7, 3, 2, and how much is the amount? Okay, it's not a fixed amount. It's a reasonable sum that will be awarded by the court. And we have the case of Jubil, Jubil, okay, and Sunway, or we call it Jubil, Sunway Legu 201 High Court case. And we also have um, unreported case here, but the principles and rule is relevant. Aziza Abdul Manan and Dr. Nur Lelawati Abdul Latif 2013, in the year, two years, uh, I'm sorry, 12 years, Get lah. We want to see how much is the amount allowed by the court for funeral. And remember, for funeral, uh, different races might have different um, different amount of claim, different expenses. Okay. And number four, also under special damages, that uh, cost incurred to replace the services rendered by spouse or child. Uh, it might be relevant. It might not be relevant, depending on the facts of the case. And this is under section seven, section three, and then clause three, three Roman. And we have this case. This case specifically discussed about CITRS lah. Okay, uh, Hum Tang Sin and Lim Lai Kun judgment again by Gopal Sri Ram, uh, Court of Appeal. Okay, and basically uh, for Hum Tang Sin, the rule is that uh, it is not about a claim for loss of service by the spouse, okay, but it is the claim to replace the service. I mean, the slight difference okay, between the two because claim for loss of service, that one is not allowed. But claim for cost incurred to replace the services rendered, in a way it is allowed actually, okay, indirectly. Okay, we want to go to the case now. Or we, we go to the um, 732-733 first before we go to the case. 73. Okay, 73. Two, right here, okay. The matches may be awarded in respect of the funeral expenses of the person deceased if such expenses have been incurred okay, by the party for whose benefit the action is brought. Remember, this is special damages, must be um, pleaded and proved. That's why the word is may be awarded. Okay, here, I mean, here the court has discretion. Uh, I mean, the, um, the, the, the claimant, okay, the, the one who wanted to claim, must prove it, must ask for it and then must prove it. Then the court will consider whether we should allow the full amount of claim or not. Okay? And then number three here, uh, about the services now. No damages, I mean, the, I mean the court won't allow, no damages shall be awarded to a parent on the ground only of his having been deprived of the service of a child. Okay? And no damages shall be awarded to husband on the ground only of his having been deprived of the services of or society of his wife. I mean that here, you can't simply claim, oh, I lost my child. So, uh, and then I lost all the services by the child. I want to claim. I mean, cannot be allowed based uh, on that basis alone. There must be some other supporting um, evidence and then it will be allowed. Otherwise, it cannot be allowed. Okay, there's a way to claim it actually. Okay, but generally speaking, cannot claim, but there's a way to claim. And we are going to discuss about it. Remember, we're discussing special damages okay, for fatal accident. Okay, we were here. We are going to look at the case, okay? all the cases here. All right, the bill. This is the case of funeral, okay? funeral expenses for special damages. 201, reported in 201. Um, 201, I just graduated, okay? Like you all, okay? I graduated um, December. I finished exam. Um, December two, 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 2000. So uh, January 2001, I started working already. I mean, uh, because I was I got a scholar with the bank. So the bank asked me to start working as soon as possible. So I asked for a month, I think. Uh, I mean, balik kampung and then later start working straight away, 2001. Okay, the year I started my first work, lah, official work. I mean, okay, all right, coming back here, that's off topic. So what happened in Jub Il and Sunway Lagoon here, I think most of you know Sanu Lagoon, even though you haven't gone to Sanu Lagoon. How I many times already? Okay, Sanu Lagoon. So the deceased okay, died, she died as a result of injuries okay, sustained after she had fallen off a train at the defendant's team park, one of the uh, right on, lah, basically train. Okay? And the husband, the deceased husband, and she has two children. Okay, the deceased two children brought an action for loss of dependency under section 7. And of course, also claiming for other general and special damages. Okay? And when the accident happened, the deceased was 29 years old okay, when she died. And then uh, he, she was working uh, before his death, uh, sorry, her death. So prior to her death, she worked as a clerk, a uh, clerk with uh, BSN. 
Okay, let's have a look. This is an example of fatal accident. So Jubail is the husband. And the court allow uh, the following claims, okay, the damages here. First, loss of dependency. So as the deceased was 29 years old, mean that here uh, below 30, kan? okay, pursuant to section 7, okay, number of years purchase was 16. Mean that here this is the statutory uh, statutory uh, number or statutory multiplier, 16 lah, because still young. Okay, we don't have to calculate uh, 60 minus age of death and then divided by 2. No need. Okay, this is automatic. I mean, similar to personal injury. All right, 16 years. However, even in this case, the court actually cut it down further. Okay, so deduction had to be made for contingencies and vicissitudes of life. So, for this case, the court said, well, we want to give you only 10. After all, I mean, the disease died already. Came in here, cannot be 16 lah, the, the working years whatsoever. So, accordingly, the most appropriate numbers of years they purchased was 10 and not 16. Okay, and after making deductions from the basic salary, remember um, the all the deductible amount whatsoever, okay? So, the court arrived at the multiplicant, the amount okay, of the claim, uh, Net, okay, it's not gross, huh? it's not a gross, it's a net yeah, earning income. So, multiplicant is 620 per month. So, accordingly, how to calculate? Six, six, uh, 620, okay, 620 per month, we have to multiply with 12 to make it annual. Okay, it's, it's supposed to be annual income, okay, times by 12 and then times by multiplier, which is not 16, okay, which is 10 only, okay, uh, the court cut it, cut it down. So all together, the amount of financial support here is 74,000, okay? So the husband and the child. And then of course can get bereavement, but those days before the amendment, so bereavement, 10,000 straight away can claim, okay? And then uh, for funeral, uh, that one for special, okay? Number three there, even though actually the husband made a claim of 5,000, well, I spent 5,000 for funeral. But in year 201, the court said, no, we are not going to give you 5,000. That's, uh, I mean, that's too high. So reasonable sum here is 2,000 only for funeral expenses for Malay, I think, for Malay or for Muslim funeral expenses. I think if for Chinese, it will be much higher, okay, depending on uh, how it was done and uh, the the remains can uh, work at whatsoever. Can. So it will be much higher, but for Muslim, okay, uh, the amount, reasonable sum for that year is 2000. Even nowadays, can I come across the one, somebody, I mean, many people share or oh, make it viral, can I mean, if you die, what will be the expenses? I mean, um, the cost to dig the, the, the grave, okay, whatever cost. I think at least we need minimum, okay, minimum 1000, I think, or maybe more. I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's also saying, lah, by way of jokes and humor. Uh, to live is also difficult, can even to die is also difficult because you have to pay. No, no. Is this a joke? A joke. But we, we we have like we call it. Um, I mean, you, you contribute a monthly key to certain. Uh, uh, we call it tabung, kan? Uh, and then uh, once you die, you can claim. Like, I mean, that your family can claim. You don't have to. I mean, prepare money in case your your dependents or family doesn't have money. Okay. We go to another case, we still have time. Ham Pang Sin and Lim Lai Kun, also under special damages. Uh, also reported in year 201, okay, like Jubil just now. So this is application of section 7, 3, uh, clause 3, okay, in which the court, uh, I mean the provision says that there's no damages for loss of service. But the court said that, well, actually loss of service is something else, but there's a way to claim. Okay, the court said that here, it is a different matter altogether, okay, where a husband not only lost his wife, it, it's not only about his feeling, okay, here, but also now he suffered monetary loss, okay, which was direct result of the negligence. I Meaning, yeah, the moment uh, the husband lost the wife, he also suffered. He has to pay money, okay, here. Because why? When the wife was alive, I was alive, okay, actually, they have made. I mean, sorry, the, the wife did all the work of a maid, okay, laundry, whatsoever. Now the wife is gone, so the husband need to pay for maid and laundry. So it's not a matter of losing the service of the wife. Now, losing something else associated with the wife here. So that's why the court allow. Okay, therefore, plaintiff, the husband in this case, can recover damages for the cost incurred okay, to replace services rendered by his spouse. And this is not um, what we mean by loss of service. Okay, actually, what's the meaning? Uh, I mean, what's the interpretation of the loss of service? 
uh, actually we derive or we we import the provision from common law so we go back to common law to look what's the real meaning of loss of service so at common law a husband could recover damages so uh, among other things in the area for the loss of services provided by his wife but when um uh, section i mean when section 7 okay, amendment was done i mean prior the previous amendment uh, it changed all that mean that here the court prohibits the award okay, for loss of service alone. But then uh, it comes with proviso. Okay, the third proviso does not prohibit an award for the loss of service provided by a wife when such a claim is coupled with another head of claim of either actually engaging a housekeeper. So this is the real expenses that the wife or the husband has to uh, incur. Not really a matter of losing services alone, but no financial implication. I can see or not. In the here, the court allows the claim if you can prove this this is the monetary implication yeah for example you have to employ you have to hire uh assistant okay, when the husband died so this is not a matter of losing a service of a husband okay, alone which is uh allowed at common law but section seven doesn't allow okay, it's a little bit confusing but then it's not actually okay here yeah? so now the issue in hump scene is that whether the plaintiff could recover disease services, okay, because the wife uh, died due to the negligence of the defendant. And then the wife used to earn 600 ringgit um, when she was alive. And those days, kan, I mean, all the salary is so little. Uh, there's no minimum salary whatsoever kan, in the year 2001. And then uh, what, what was the services uh, rendered by the uh, wife towards the husband? The husband is the defendant. So services rendered at home were cooking, washing clothes, housekeeping. Okay? That's the services. But if the husband didn't suffer any financial losses later, financial implication cannot claim. Now because um, husband, um, I mean, lost the wife and then husband had to hire housemate. So he, ha he had to pay. So now husband claimed 400 ringgit for maid's wages lah, basically. I mean, specific amount. This is special damages. So the court allowed basically the claim. So yeah, the, uh, the court said it doesn't really fall under the uh, the provision in which the court doesn't allow the claim. In the court allows the claim because there's a specific way of proving it. Okay, it's not a matter of services alone. Okay, here some legal implication services rendered, which is actually we can calculate in monetary uh, I mean basis or amount here. And we discussed already key okay, limitation period just now uh, three years. And this is the case, a uh, federal court decision, uh, very old case, 1965, Kwan, Hip, Peng, and Yap, Yin, and another. And in this case, okay, why we are discussing this case is quite unique because the claim was brought four days late. So it doesn't matter, four days or four hours late. So four days late, too bad. It's too late, so you cannot claim. I mean, it, um, it's that, we call it statute bar. I mean, the statute bar, the claim to be, uh, to be, I mean, prevent the claim to be brought in the court. Lah. Too bad. So the claim was dismissed. So we are done with all okay, this. Uh, this now we discuss about bereavement, okay, and then we discuss about loss of financial support. Basically, the the way to the way to calculate is the same. I mean, it's similar to personal injury, but different section. Lah. we are we are we are relying on section seven. Everything about section seven from seven one until seven eleven, whichever is relevant. And we discuss about funeral, okay, which is a uh, lump sum, uh, and then. Uh, um, what was C I T R S R? Okay, you have to know what was what's the full phrases, lah. Cost incurred, blah blah blah. Okay. Okay, we still have time, so let's continue with estate claim. Okay, uh, section eight uh, actually it revolves around. Uh, it is meant to cover effects of death on certain causes of action. Okay, and what's the important significance of section eight here? Basically, section eight make it clear that this is the section provision okay, of law which give right okay, to claim damages on behalf of the estate of the deceased, which is the loss suffered by the deceased before he died. So, meaning that here, if the uh, this, if the deceased was alive, this is the thing that uh, he or she can claim. So now the the claim uh, is called estate claim. The claim is available. I mean, can be made by the by the representative actually. Okay. So, and then um, it, it also relates with survival of causes of action. Okay. Uh, even though the disease is no longer alive, okay, but the cause of action okay, which give the party the right to claim, survive. So, the, he's, he's not alive, I mean he's a disease, but cause of action survives so that it can be brought 
to the court. Okay, that's the importance of section 8 basically. It, it talk about um, survival of causes of action. Okay, so for a state claim here, um, pain, uh, we, we have another categories of claim. Okay, we have pain and suffering, we have loss of amenities, we also have loss of earning and we have special damages which is uh, funeral, medical, nursing and others. I mean that here, if the plaintiff survived, this is all the claim that he can make he or she can make can make but because he dies already so now estate has the right to claim on behalf of the deceased i mean that here so cause of action is still there despite the fact that he's no longer alive this is what we call as estate claim so is i mean it's not really meant for the dependent kan? it's not financial support uh, which is given to the dependent this is the claim actually uh, which is um, i mean which is which should be given to the this is, but the deceased is already. So now estate has the right to claim okay, on behalf of the This is slightly different compared to section 7. 7 is meant for dependent. Okay? Depend, uh, we call it dependency claim. So because for pain and suffering, okay, it's not meant for dependent. Defend, dependent doesn't suffer pain and suffering. Right? It is meant for the deceased who suffer the pain and suffering. So whatever relevant, uh, this claim can be made can, uh, can be made by the uh, representative by the estate lah. pain and suffering and loss of amenities and then like we discussed in personal injury we have the case of tanga value okay we also have the case of we have we discussed already tanga value under personal injury and go chai what administrator of the estate of go mintak and the deceased so for the estate claim the name is the uh, administrator or executor I mean here it's not the name of the deceased lah, but it will be that it's like this okay go chai what so who is Goh Chaiwat? Administrator of the estate of the of Goh Mintak, the deceased. Okay? And now claiming against uh, Lee, Mui Ping and others. So here who brought the, uh, who brought the claim? So father of the deceased was awarded 6,000 for pain and suffering and loss of amenities. So not based on dependency claim here. This is for the deceased, alright? Because why? The son was alive for one hour. So for one hour, pain and suffering and loss of amenities, the court it was assessed as 6,000. It will be different if the son died on the spot. So there's no claim for pain and suffering and loss of amenities. Here, alive for one hour then can claim this amount for the year 2,000. Okay, because why? In, the, in that one hour, okay, the, the father managed to prove to the court, okay, the son was in agonizing pain, was in real pain, okay, suffering from pain. Because why? You can see uh, clearly bleeding from nose, nose and mouth, lah, okay, uh, the blood flow. And then, of course, the, the father cannot claim for LOFE. Okay, it wasn't allowed. Okay, it wasn't allowed. Um, specifically under Section Eight, Section Two C. Okay, because the court doesn't want doesn't want it to be, uh, um, I mean, redundant kind with LOFS, uh, financial support. So the calculation is the same kind, even though the basis is different. Here, there's no future earning uh, allowed. Okay, under Section Two, Section C, but can claim for. Pain, suffering and loss of amenities under general damages for estate claim. Okay, earning. So what kind of earning? Okay, we don't call it LOFE. Okay, only uh, loss of earning before the death. For example, the, the plaintiff um, survived one month okay, before the death, before he died. So earning of one month lah, before the death is allowed. Okay, so under section 8 to C. So if one hour, then how do you calculate kan, loss of earning? So at least usually few days or maybe a month, then only can claim for loss of earning. I mean, that's uh, how to calculate, how to prove to the court okay, that the deceased suffered loss of earnings, the real loss of earning. It's not financial support now, okay? Loss of earning by the deceased before his death. Okay, let's go to it. We haven't read it, can okay? We go to section eight. We have a look at how it is worded. How does it read, uh, read here on the section 8? Okay, 7 is a long one. You have until 11. Uh. Okay, here until 11. And then we read section 8. 8, it has 1 and then it has 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh. Okay, it has 6. Uh. Okay, not long. I mean shorter than 7. So just now 8, 2 kan? Okay? Alright, 8, 2. Yeah, you can read here, alright. And then here, when a cause of action survive as a faucet for the benefit of the estate of this person, they may just uh, recover a bulk okay, for the benefit of the estate of that person, shall not include exemplary damages, it won't include bereavement, okay? Because it is all claims under 
section 7 kan so it shouldn't overlap lah we shouldn't allow double claim whatsoever so it won't it won't cover this okay it won't cover loss of expectation of life okay and it won't cover loss of um loss of earning of any period okay shall not include yeah all right okay so it, it doesn't include isn't it here yeah, section 7 uh, sorry 8 2 a here it won't include shall not include any example damages any damages for bereavement any damages for loss of expectation of life and any damages for loss of earning in respect of any period after that person oh so uh, here any period after that person's death so loss of earning before meaning that you impliedly that's how we read the the provision lah it doesn't say you can claim for loss of earning uh, before the death but from this section it is understandable that loss of earning uh, of any period okay before the person death is claimable can claim uh, that's how you read the provision okay we go back to slide okay i think we have to stop here it's 9 49 it's a long discussion okay here all right blah blah oh they missed the property already they are almost we almost finished actually right, let's finish the the, the last slides here Okay, so uh, we were here. So special damages, of course, um, it will include funeral provided. Sorry, I have to maximize. Bear with me for a few more minutes before we uh, finish our class today. So special damages under section 8, okay, under section 8, estate claim, uh, it covers as well funeral provided uh, dependent didn't claim it under section 7. So can claim under section 8, either one. Remember, it cannot be double claim, okay? Because you are funeral only happens once, okay? it doesn't happen twice or whatsoever. It will cover medical expenses before the person die, obviously. And the same care, meaning that here uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the victim or the deceased survive for few for for certain period of time. Then you can claim this thing. Lah. Must be specifically pleaded and proved. And also property damage, which belong to the uh, the deceased, lah, wherever relevant so it has to be really incurred before he died the moment after he died cannot claim anymore whatever happened before the death before i mean in between the accident and in, in between the 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 day uh, the disease died for example there's a gap of one month so wh whatever in between of one month here can claim he provided must be proof lah, prove it to the court so it falls under special damages it's quite straightforward actually and we stop here. Okay, we are about to finish actually. So we are done with um okay, let me stop share. Go back to here and let me stop record. <laughs>